Rock and Roll Friday on the Savage Nation. How are you? With the one and only Teddy and Michael. I love her. It is the Teddy and Michael hour on the Savage Nation. You could try. You could love to. We begin today with a... I don't know whether to go light on you. I don't know whether to get you agitated and make you so crazy you don't know what to do with your anger. I don't know whether to charm you and send you home happy. But I'm going to tell you something. The story that I'm about to disclose to you from today's New York Times that we linked up on michaelsavage.com is so alarming that I'm going to tell it to you. Now, the headline is deceptive. It says, popular radio host has drug company ties. Of course, they leave out the most important part of the story, which is NPR. That's right, National Public Radio, um, a a um, an organization that should have been closed down a long time ago. But it comes out today that because of the excellent work of Doc of, of Senator Grassley, who has investigated these crooks, these thieves, these that a psychiatrist and radio host named Dr. Frederick K. Goodwin has been uh, uncovered by Senator Charles Grassley, a Republican from Iowa, God bless his soul, to be one of the worst hucksters uh, who has committed crimes against children that I would say is, is in a way equal to, if not worse, than child molestation. What's even worse is that this psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Goodwin, is a former director of the so-called National Institute of Mental Health. What's even worse is that these radio programs on NPR uh, are listened to by about a million morons, the same Obama voters who have been taken in by that huckster as this doctor. Now, I want you to listen to what Dr. Goodwin, the psychiatrist, did to your children. Dr. Goodwin's radio programs have touched on subjects important to the commercial interests of the companies for which he pimps, I mean consults. In a program broadcast on September 20th, 2005, we learn, Dr. Goodwin created, if you look back through human history, many, many people are so-called bipolar. What, they have ups and downs? That's bipolar disorder? Yeah, so they can sell you a drug to turn you into a flatliner. So this quack, this fraud, this charlatan, this huckster who should be in prison, in my opinion, Dr. Goodwin warned that children with so-called bipolar disorder who are left untreated could suffer brain damage. But then he goes on. Listen to what he said on NPR. Listen to what he said on NPR. But as we'll be hearing today, Dr. Goodwin reassured his audience, modern treatments, mood stabilizers in particular, have been proven both safe and effective in bipolar children, close quote. That very day, GlaxoSmithKline paid this pimp, Dr. Goodwin, $2,500 to give a promotional lecture for its mood stabilizer drug at a, uh, a golf resort in Naples, Florida. It gets worse. Glaxo paid this, this thing, Dr. Goodwin, more than $329,000 that year alone for promoting their drug according to records to given that have been given to congressional investigators. Now it gets even worse. Dr. Goodwin said that Bill Lichtenstein, the program's producer on NPR, knew of his consulting activities, but that neither he nor Mr. Lichtenstein thought that, quote, getting money from drug companies could be an issue. Well, of course not. Anybody at NPR wouldn't think that's an issue since they're all mendicants anyway. Anybody on NPR is a beggar. They don't work for a living. None of them have ever earned a dime that's honest. They beg for the money. So here's a guy out on the stump for pharmaceutical companies, pimping drugs that are dangerous, and he's not in prison. Now, this idiot was in charge of an NPR show called The Infinite Mind. Isn't that, isn't that liberal? The Infinite Mind the syndicated show, The Infinite Mind on NPR, National Public Radio. Uh, so The Infinite Mind is a weekly program that has won more than 60 journalism awards. Now, I've not won any journalism awards, by the way. 
And you know what? I don't ever want a journalism award. The day I win a journalism award is a day that you better start distrusting me. The day I win any award from any of these fake organizations is the day you better not listen to me. But this this crackpot, this quack, this crank, this pimp, and I hope that they're not editing my word pimp because this man is lower than a than a man who panders prostitutes on a street. And I'll tell you why. A pimp provides a service that the man knows he wants and he's going to get. He provides prostitutes. That's what a pimp provides. If a man wants the services of a prostitute, he goes to a pimp. At least he knows what he wants, and the middleman isn't disguising himself as a doctor. But this low-life pimp with a medical degree has the nerve to peddle drugs to your children without disclosing to you that he's receiving money from the drug companies. Do you believe this? It gets even worse. This program by this doctor has received major underwriting from the so-called National Institutes of Health and the so-called National Science Foundation. Now, how could they give money to this guy? I was once in the science field. I know what it's all about. It's all politics all the time. Very little real science is funded anymore, particularly in these fields of psychiatry. It's all politics. And thank God to the Congress, and thank God for Mr. Grassley for investigating these uh, interconnections. In October, Senator Grassley revealed that Dr. Charles Nemeroff of Emory University, again, one of the nation's most influential psychiatric researchers, so-called, earned more than $2.8 million in consulting arrangement, arrangements with drug makers from 2000 to 07 and failed to report at least $1.2 million of that income to his university uh, and violated federal research rules. Now, it gets even worse. I can go on. In June, the senator revealed that Harvard University's Dr. Joseph Biederman, whose, whose work has fueled an explosion in the use of powerful antipsychotic medicines in children. He's the one who said you have to give antipsychotics to your children as, as early as two years of age. That pimp earned at least $1.6 million from drug makers between 2000 and 07. Now, I want to ask you something, and I'm going to ask it straight up. Do you agree with me that peddling drugs that are dangerous to children that may not even be necessary is worse than child molestation or in the same category as child molestation and that these doctors should be taken out immediately in handcuffs and uh, tried for child molestation? Because to me, they're molesting the child's psyche and mind. Should he be indicted at least for fraud, if not for child molestation? Attention, bottom-feeding class action lawyers who listen to the Savage Nation in order to see if I'm going to disclose who you are. Attention, attention shoppers. Attention class action shoppers. I'm going to ask you bottom-feeding class action lawyers who I normally despise to consider suing National Public Radio, to consider suing NPR's directors, and to consider suing this doctor personally for damaging children's minds and for fraud, whatever you can come up with. This is the savage nation. This country has so melted down with corruption from the top to the bottom, from the doctors to the politicians. You don't know who to trust anymore. This, to me, is criminal activity. Does it bother you? Look, I can talk about Clinton and Obama's cabinet. Please take those calls down. We, I, I said it first. I said it Monday already. The Clintons used a doorman called Obama to re-enter the White House. That's all. They knew that maybe, with her it was a maybe. They figured they'd get somebody to appeal to the moronic, you, you know, useless idiots. So they got Obama, the clown now, to, to re-enter. Everybody from the Clinton administration is welcome back. I don't know if they're going to bring back the silverware. I can tell you that. But I certainly hope that they bring back the sheets. I'll be right back. Savage. 